If you appreciate what we do in these video explorations, please consider becoming a patron of Memory Hole Blog at Patreon slash Memory Hole. One of the very basis of the COVID-19 pandemic is subterfuge. What if the lockdowns and similar draconian measures enacted throughout the world have little to do with public health, but rather involve emotional, psychological, and behavioral modification in anticipation of entirely new lifestyles and forms of political governance? These are exactly the types of questions many people throughout the world have come to ponder as the rationales behind the coronavirus public health crisis increasingly erode. How are COVID-19 and social unrest being used by a transnational entity and movement to fundamentally alter our socioeconomic and political landscape? On this episode of the Memory Hole Blog Report. This is MHB Report. I'm James Tracy. The World Economic Forum and its like-minded allies have for several years publicly ruminated on elaborate plans to introduce heightened forms of direct technological control over entire societies and their constituents, and to exert such control worldwide. The greatest obstacle to such plans is, without exception, public uncertainty, hesitancy, and even civil resistance to such control. Therefore, in varied instances throughout Western history, a problem is introduced in order to manufacture the cause for intervention by which the public is basically tricked into accepting policies and laws that heretofore seem unreasonable and detrimental to their well-being. Today, tremendous resources are directed toward the weakening of the public's will toward its own self-preservation. Um, and nobody wants to be the bearer of bad news, uh, you know, and just going around saying at every speech you give, oh, this awful thing is going to happen, because we also need to talk about the incredible success in global health. So we need a very positive message uh, uh, to go with this. but. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll bet if we took a vote here, we'd uh, allocate substantial resources uh, for our epidemics. And then, you know, how do we get out to a broader set of people? The plans and methods to effectively alter the course of human civilization can be discussed openly by the self-appointed technocratic class, because the media can be counted on to downplay or completely overlook any such grandiose proclamations. Along these lines, the general public, and especially the young, have a compromised view of history that fails to adequately understand and recognize totalitarian ambition and purpose. The World Economic Forum is a transnational body that advises major corporations, the banking system, governments, and NGOs the world over on forging the critical policies under which the global population is forced to comply. These multi-pronged policies ultimately permeate most every facet of everyday life. The World Economic Forum's director, Klaus Schwab, is a proud advocate of Marxism and global communist government. He has an impressive resume and the immensely influential organization he leads makes no secret of its allegiances to Karl Marx and Marx's ideas. Dr. Schwab holds a doctorate in engineering as well as several honorary doctoral degrees, has served as a board member of the famous Bilderberg Group and several United Nations bodies, and he presently holds an honorary professorship at Ben-Gurion University in Israel. In light of Schwab's accomplishments and erudition, his embrace of Marxism cannot be taken lightly. Rather, one must conclude that 
he is fully aware and accepting of its murderous legacy and that it is opposed to fundamental freedom of speech, association, religion, and economic liberty. Dr. Schwab has of late turned to using his vast influence as director of the WEF to advocate for the defeat of capitalism and the rollout of communist-style world government, one in which private property and presumably many forms of entrepreneurship will be abolished. This new form of Marxist communist totalitarianism will be ushered in by way of what the WEF and its collaborators term the Great Reset, an ambitious across-the-board plan that has been in the works for many years. In the tradition of Marxian revolution, the existing intellectual, religious, and social order must be destroyed. And what better means of initiating such destruction than a public health crisis forcing thousands of small businesses to close and corralling the population toward dependence on major corporations like Amazon and a handful of retail chains for goods and services. The new centralized socioeconomic order that is proposed to take place of what's being dismantled will be overseen by the likes of unelected policy experts, while social regulation will fall under the purview of the pharmaceutical and biotech cartel, with vaccination now promoted as a means for life to return to normal. The continued obeisance to public health science and policy experts with no integrity in fact means that the lives we once knew are a permanent thing of the past. The WEF's promotion of communism alongside the U.S. Democratic Party members' increasingly leftist agenda and embrace of Marxist groups, including Black Lives Matter and Antifa, cannot be dismissed as coincidental, but are instead part and parcel of a coordinated campaign, evidenced in the very Democratic Party presidential campaign's motto of Build Back Better, taken directly from the WEF's foremost Great Reset slogans. Is there any difference between the sort of communism advocated by the WEF, Communist China, and the U.S. Democratic Party? In early 2020, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo went so far as to publicly chastise certain U.S. governors in person for forging intimate and potentially treasonous ties with communist China behind the federal government's back, thereby potentially hampering U.S. diplomatic efforts abroad. Indeed, last year, a Chinese government-backed think tank in Beijing produced a report that assessed all 50 of America's governors on their attitudes towards China. They labeled each of you friendly, hardline, or ambiguous. I'll let you decide where you think you belong. Someone in China already has. Many of you indeed in that report are referenced by name. And in fact, whether you're viewed by the CCP as friendly or hardline, know that it's working you. Know that it's working the team around you. Such relationships must be considered alongside the extraordinary lockdown measures so zealously enforced by some of these very democratic state governors, including New York, California, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Washington. In the unprecedented wave of rioting and vandalism, many of the same public officials betrayed their own constituents by condoning such property destruction and even proposals to defund entire police departments. Taken together, such conscious and intentional negligence suggests how the Democratic Party has become a veritable communist fifth column in America. Their actions must be accepted as components of an even more strident global communist orthodoxy and movement of which the Marxist Schwab and his associates alongside the COVID-19 medical scientific biotech juggernaut are intimately tied. 
If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHP at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org and MemoryHoleBlog Report, this is James Tracy.